Now, if you can ignore that a spider horror movie has a lead character named Charlotte, as in Charlotte's Web, and then proceeds to name her spider pet thing Sting, like from The Hobbit, the rest of the movie is superb. Now, Sting is a new monster horror movie coming out of Australia, and it is one of the most unique and well-executed monster movies I've seen in a really, really long time. It took me by surprise. I should preface and say, me and my friends, we have a list of bad movies that we enjoy to watch whenever we hang out. This was added to the list. We went in with low expectations, but then as it was unfolding, we were like, wait, I think we added this to the wrong list. This is not bad. This is surprisingly excellent. Now, let's get into Sting, what it's all about, and why it's so great, and why you need to watch it. Now, this movie is set solely in one apartment block in New York City. The film follows a young girl, Charlotte, who is feeling isolated and neglected in her rundown building. Now, her character is wildly irritating to begin with. I didn't sympathize with her in the least, and she was always causing trouble and doing things that I didn't agree with. However, there is a turning point for this girl when she finds a spider after it shoots through a window from the sky. Now, she finds this spider because she spends her days crawling through the vents, sneaking into apartments. Well, sneaking into her grandmother's apartment. There'll be some uh, parallels with that later. Now, yes, this movie has alien spiders. Perfect. Any rational thinking person would want that sucker dead, or at least choose to ignore it, but not Charlotte. It didn't even land in her apartment. Instead, Charlotte takes it and puts it in a jar and keeps it as a pet. She does not tell anyone about this, not even her family. She just chooses to feed it and look after it solo. Sting begins to reach an unstoppable size, breaking out of the jar that she is now keeping it in. So she keeps having to expand the jar, making it bigger, escapes his confinements and wreaks havoc on the building. He begins to use the vents to travel around and just destroying everything and everyone in its path. Animal or human, it doesn't care. It will come after you. It's established quite early on that the dynamic in this family is very strained with Charlotte's mother remarrying after separating from Charlotte's dad. And the stepfather and Charlotte seem to have some major issues connecting. However, what they do share is a love for drawing, with the stepfather, despite being the maintenance man on the building, also being a comic designer. The thing that I found weird was that he would take a lot of Charlotte's ideas and use them in his story, essentially taking the credit for it himself. That never sat right with me. We'll ignore that for now, though. The giant roaming spider now poses a threat to not just their family, but also the entire building. And after a mother is put in harm's way, the stepfather and Charlotte are brought together with their goal of saving their loved ones. And ultimately, their bond is established during the chaos. Now, the character development in this film was better than it had any right to be. Every character had a unique story, despite the movie just being a spider hunting down the residents. You cared for the people and what might happen to them, whether it be the woman with dementia or the woman who lost her entire family and she's now living alone. By the time the spider heads their way, you feel sympathetic, with stakes being way higher now. Sting ultimately explores themes of isolation, neglect, and the destructive nature of unchecked obsession, which is exactly what Charlotte has. She is thoroughly obsessed with this spider. It's almost concerning. Obviously, she is obsessed until that bad boy's too big and taking down the residents. She stops loving it then. The movie itself isn't overwhelmingly scary, I'll say, but if, like me, you're terrified of arachnids, this will hit close to home. However, what this movie does well is bring heart to a creature feature. This movie is goofy, there's no doubt, but you're rooting for these characters. With the movie receiving a score of 70% on Rotten Tomatoes, it seems others share this view of the movie as well. It was better than it had any right to be, completely surprising all of us as we watched it. One actor's voice, though, I will say, seemed to be ADR for almost the entirety of the movie. It was the stepfather. I'm assuming he was the only person maybe in this cast that couldn't do an American accent. I'm only assuming, though. It's an Australian-made film set in America. Not sure where they filmed it. I'm 
certainly leaning towards that they cast Australians to play these roles. And to be fair, if you can't do the accent, that's fine. You should hear my American accent. It's atrocious. And don't ask, you will never hear it. Not in this lifetime. The movie feels like a great throwback B-movie horror that has you laughing but also fearing about what's coming next. Not to mention the practical effects were surprisingly great, especially with the spider wrapping up its victims, kind of Lord of the Rings style. There's lots of references to The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, and it's done so incredibly effectively. However, the glaring flaw in this movie is its pacing issues, but if you can get past that, you're in for a wild ride, and oh boy, is it a great ride. The camera angles of this movie are also incredible. I mean, there are numerous shots of people going inside the vents. Obviously, this film starts where people don't know there's an issue with a the spider. They just think something's rattling around in there, maybe rodents. So they call him pest control. He, of course, wants to go in the vent to see what's going on. And the shots of the spider's POV and then seeing the person's POV, absolutely terrifying. Suddenly, you're not just scared of spiders, you're terrified of vents. And the last thing you want is one of these giant vents that they have in their building. Seeing the vents open up, absolutely unnerving. I do feel like Australia and New Zealand are producing some of the best horror movies these days. I mean, I'm simply saying that after also watching Talk To Me, which is another incredibly effective Australian horror movie. If you've not seen that, you really need to watch it. Australia's hitting with the good stuff right now, and these movies are excellent. So let me know if you've seen either of those. I did discuss talk to me in a previous video i'll link it at the end of this video definitely go check it out because that one is worth a watch and that one is just straight up terrifying and traumatizing that movie had me thinking about it as i went to bed i often don't think about films when i lie in bed i don't really get that scared but talk to me and i would say smile those were the last two where i was lying in bed thinking crap like, I'm thinking about this, and I don't want to be thinking about this. Let me just scroll on TikTok until my mind shuts off from what I've just seen. Let me know if you have watched Sting, though, and what your thoughts were. Despite at times being predictable and goofy, the film was a really pleasant surprise to me anyway, and definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen it yet. So go watch it, and then come back to this video and leave me your review. Also, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more movie reviews, breakdowns, trailer reactions, etc. I'm doing it all over here and I will see you in the next video.